Hey guys, what's up? It's me again. I'm back with another video blog, and this time I'm really excited to let you guys know that there's a rocket launch tonight. Um, I'm here with my friends. We're all covering the rocket launch. Um, it's a SpaceX Falcon 9, and we're all super excited. How's it going? Kyle Brown, U.S. launch reporter. Uh, Go virus for the launch. Getting excited. Hopefully we uh, have a first attempt, first attempt success. Joey Vars for all mankind. Getting ready for hopefully the fourth Falcon 9 launch of the year and second barge landing attempt, hopefully. I'm Dave Cesari. I'm with Video Shampoo and the Utica Phoenix. Looking forward to tonight. It should be a pretty good show. Jaeger from Kyle's apartment. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the launch tonight is set to go off at 1.21 a.m. Eastern Time from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station, Space Launch Complex 40. Um, that's in Florida. The launch window will remain open for two hours, and if by chance the rocket cannot go tonight, there is a backup date of May 7th, so pretty much tomorrow night, same time. JCSAT-14 is a commercial communication satellite for Sky Perfect JSAT Corporation in Japan. Um, this launch is an exciting one to look forward to because SpaceX is going to attempt to land the first stage of their Falcon 9 rocket on a drone ship out in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean for the second time. Last month, SpaceX landed their Falcon 9 rocket on the drone ship out in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean after delivering the CRS-8 payload to low Earth orbit. Um, low Earth orbit is about 1,243 miles above the Earth. Uh, the mission they're going to be launching um, on May 6th, or tonight rather, um, it's going to geostationary transfer orbit. That is about 22,300 miles above the Earth. Due to the extreme velocities and the um, hot re-entry uh, Falcon will be experiencing, it's more than unlikely that there will be a successful drone ship landing. So because JCSAT-14 is going to geostationary transfer orbit, the, uh, of course, I still love you, the drone ship where the booster is going to attempt its landing on is located about 410 miles downrange of the Atlantic Ocean. By comparison, the CR-8, uh, CRS-8 location of the drone ship was about 185 miles downrange, and that was because it was going to low Earth orbit, and its actual downrange velocity was not going as fast for the booster recovery, which gave it a higher probability of, of a successful landing. So after the CRS-8 mission, when SpaceX landed that first stage of Falcon 9 on the drone ship, they brought it back to Port Canaveral, and it was hanging out there for like five days. And um, Kyle over here stuck around for those five days and got some really cool shots of the rocket, and he saw you know, a lot of really cool things they were doing with it. I didn't get to see it, so I'm kind of jealous. It was pretty magnificent. It's 15 stories tall, and to see a crane lift it up and turn it horizontal from underneath itself and lower it down onto that truck was, uh, it was quite a sight. I am covering the launch tonight with my team at America Space. You can follow along on Twitter and Instagram. Also, make sure you like us on Facebook. As always, we are providing live updates and information via our live launch tracker on the website. You can also find the webcast there as well. Um, if I were you, I'd bookmark that right now so that way you can easily tune in for the launch. So thank you for hanging out with us tonight. We're really excited for the launch. Um, we'll be doing more of these videos. And um, yeah. Go SpaceX! Go Falcon 9!